Yeah, Brazil, obviously, uh, we would have thought that they would be the one team to win all three group stage games. And apparently this is the first time it's happened again since 1994, I believe. It was the last time it's happened that no team in the group stages won every single match at group stage level. So that just shows and uh, it just shows how competitive this World Cup is and how the gaps are closing. And I think watching that Brazil game today, for me, I love the fact that Cameroon got the job done. I don't know what the guys think, but for me, Cameroon getting that job done is really great for football because I do look at Brazil's squad, not the starting 11, but you look at the second team, maybe the third team, they are more than capable to win a lot of games at international level. And I think Cameroon getting that job done is great for football just to show that if you get the right managers, the right players with the right attitude, desire and commitment, as we always say, those same certain words, easy said, hard to do in a team dynamic. But when you get that, you can achieve great stuff. And I think when I look at one of the teams that make it into the next round, who's been one of the best at it for me, in my opinion, is Australia. The way Australia play and apply themselves, when you talk about togetherness, teamwork, commitment, and being able to understand the game of football, yes, you can defend for a long period of time against so-called superior opposition who are better at keeping the ball than you and technically better gifted than you. But when you get that one chance and you take that one chance and you're clinical and you still apply yourself defensively for 90 plus minutes, you can achieve great things. And I think it's something you just have to admire. It might not be your style of football, but you have to admire because to be able to play like that comes with a great deal of coaching and detail as well. Yeah, Eric, what are your thoughts on seeing the likes of Cameroon getting this massive result? I mean, Brazil, though they make changes, I think it was nine changes, the most they've ever made at a FIFA World Cup. I mean, that's a lot, completely different team. But to be an African nation like Cameroon going into that last match and get a result, what did you see from them that you liked? Well, I think Cameroon played well throughout the tournament and they were a little bit unlucky uh, at times. You know, in Abubakar, you have... For me, somebody who is right on the cusp of being a, a world-class striker, he was unbelievable at FC Porto, did really well at Besiktas as well. And you saw the way he took that goal. He's multifaceted as well. It's great for African football to see African teams do well. You know, everybody talks about Conan Bowl being the most difficult qualification process for the World Cup. I would argue that uh, CAF is, is just as difficult because not only do you have to top your group, but then you have to go into a playoff once again. Just think about Senegal, uh, you know, beating Egypt to get uh, to this point. And then things have to sort of go your way when you get into the group stage. And I think the differences between teams sometimes have been one very good play or just a little bit of luck. Just think about Japan with the ball not actually crossing the line according to technology. I do want to focus on Brazil really quickly. One of the things that was very apparent to me after the first game is that Brazil's predictability in terms of their offensive movement is greater without Neymar in pockets of space because he's the kind of guy who has a little bit of magic who can change the game any which way. And what we saw already in the second game was that Brazil was relying a lot on the wide players making the difference. Rafinha on the right and Vinicius on the left. And down the middle, they were very predictable. So it allowed Switzerland to really sit deep in a narrow block. So I think that even though Brazil is still is one of my favorites, I do see them having some problems breaking down low blocks without Neymar. But having said that, I mean, this is just a, an, another great story. You know, not having teams win out, showing that there's a lot of quality across the globe. And it will be watered down in the next World Cup. That's the point that needs to be made. Yeah, totally. It's getting closer and closer. Every single team is very even to the other one. And the moment that you are a little bit disciplined and you're organized and you bring that intensity on a high standard, you know that you have a chance. You guys are mentioning about um, the nine changes from Brazil. But have a look. Gabriel Jesus, Martinelli, Rodrigo, Anthony, yeah. Familia, mm. Fred. All of those are uh, uh, in the starting of their own teams in the domestic league that they play top higher level Real Madrid and Manchester United, Manchester City, all top players. And today they couldn't make it. I think that a, a massive, massive credit yeah, to Roger Son, the, the, the coach of Cameroon that did an amazing job because the team looked focused, never gave many chances, many space to the uh, strikers of uh, this uh, Brazil team. You know that Anthony, he was impressed in the first half. Tried, you know that he's yeah. going to drop the shovel every single time. That Gabriel Jesus has been magnificent during the whole season and he's very dangerous, wants to show to uh, uh, his coach that he wants to be in the 11th starter from the next coming games for Brazil. So at the end, 
you have to be credit to Cameroon that today, once again, they cope with every expectation from this uh, Brazilian side. And at the end, they got the job done. And fantastic goal if you see that cross uh, arriving from several goal line between the two centre backs uh, with that fantastic header. It's today who have hold his shirt for a few more minutes <laughs> and swap it later on. And uh, that, uh, uh, that meant that he was sent off. But definitely, uh, I enjoy very much watching Cameroon, even though that they were not going through. Uh, I think it was a massive, massive result for them and for the future. Nigel, you have a question? Question. Yeah, and I was just going to say to the guys then, you're right in what you're saying, because I see the same thing where the gap between top teams and other nations is getting a lot smaller. Do you mm-hmm. think that's a problem in world football where these players now, yes, they're modern athletes, but they're being coached so much in a robotic way that there's not enough freedom given to them to be individuals? And that's what Eric said, which made a great point, and he's right. Neymar plays with a greater freedom of individuality. And as much as we see so many talented players, they're going to be easy and predictable to play against because our coach is now not encouraging individuality in, in some of these teams. Like I know obviously Eric Winters can speak for Portugal. Rucho can speak for, Sp- uh, for the Spanish yards. Do you think that that's a problem? I, I personally think it's a problem as well in England, where the co- these kids are being coached too much and there's not enough individuality or personality being allowed to come through. You know, can, can I just say this? I think there's certainly an argument to be to be made or a discussion to be had about whether certain players are having their creativity coached out of them. But I actually think that the problem here is slightly different. You don't have mm. a lot of times to a lot of time to prepare these national teams. So the one area mm. that you're really going to reinforce is the defensive block, right? Organizing the defenders, and then. Given that teams don't have that much time to go through the attacking processes, you rely a little bit more on that individual ability, a player who has a little bit more flair to tip the balances. Neymar, in this case, in this discussion, is just one of those otherworldly players. You can argue that he, right now he with Messi and Mbappe, best three players in the world. So I think in this instance, for me, and unlike you, I was not a professional player, I think that's really the difference, is being able to have a player who has a moment of magic to unlock which it, what is a very well-regimented defensive line. Yeah, definitely. But where do you get that kind of players? Because they are not mm-hmm. anymore there. Before, 20 years back, every single team had two, three, four players who can be unpredictable. For me, the most important is that there is no more streets. We don't have the players who play on the street, who have that ability to adapt to uh, to the sideways, to the cars they are in front, to playing in front of uh, against kids that they are older than you. You get that kind of abilities when you are younger, when you play on the streets. Right now, you got teams and uh, you got players, like, and I can talk with, in the same way like my kids. They go on a fantastic, perfect service. They play, they have the perfect bound, the perfect ball, the perfect shoes. They got everything set. So at the end, they are all predictable. They are all the same. The faster is the one is going to ride the first. The one who shoots harder is, is going to be the one who gets the, the free kids. But at the end, no one gets something different. No one gets things out of the box. And that's why normally Brazilian, Argentinian, they bring something different. You can see Gabriel Jesus, no long ago, he was on the street playing with the mates. And you can see when he's on the field, there's something that is going to happen. A turn, a, a, a shot, a run. Uh, Correa from Atletico de Madrid, the Argentinian player, exactly the same. Those are the players who normally, they break those lines. They break those teams when they are very tight at the back. We don't have any more. And now it's all about physical, tactical approach, nothing else. And of course, they is getting even every single game. 